It is 414, and you're in tune to 88.5 WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. And I'm really excited because we have a, a true multi-talented musician, songwriter, producer, actor, and he is the organizer of one of the uh, top R&B and soul reviews around. And uh, they are going to be having a Christmas show this upcoming Wednesday at B.B. King's in New York City Times Square. And taking the time out of his busy schedule this afternoon is Carlton J. Smith. So how you doing, Carlton? Brother Joe, I'm fine. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. And, you know, thanks to come on the Upper Room and, you know. You know, I got to say, that sounds like such a slick name for a radio show, the Upper Room. I like that. You should have a nightclub to go with it, man. <laughs> yeah. I like. I got to tell you something. I, that little... Uh, a little bit of that track I just heard was pretty funky. I yeah. found, what's it called? Yeah, I found love from uh, Tone, T-O-N-E-X. Kind I of, uh, Tone, congratulations on that. It was. It definitely had a little groove to it. Yeah, he, he's got gospel music, but kind of the R&B, hip-hop flavor. So. And no yeah. problem. Look at it. I'm going to challenge him to a battle, because I'm coming with some hardcore funk and soul, okay? That's so, right. We're going to have to burn up a stage in Fairfield, Connecticut, okay? Yeah, you're welcome at any time. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we should uh, first talk about... Uh, the background on the uh, the R and B soul review because the first time I saw you on stage was uh, for the Sly Stone tribute and oh, man, it, it was, was amazing. So, yeah, but that was so long ago, and and the shows are so much better and they're tighter now. You know, uh, I, well, I'm, if you enjoyed it, I'm glad about that. Where do you see the next time I do it? I'm going to do a, a a Holy Trinity. We're going to do James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone, and P Funk, and just uh, we're going to tear BB Kings down that night. It's just going to be too wow. funky in there. Without a doubt. A- any uh, time frame for that? Do you have? A- we're, we're looking at uh, possibly February because we we've got a, a New Year's uh, Day brunch we're doing. We're going to do a tribute to Motown, uh-huh. and then uh, in February we're going to do uh, on Valentine's Day the soulful love songs, like some of the greatest "Let's Stay Together," you know, things like that. Just all the love songs of R and B that are just uh, you know for all the couples. And so then we're looking at um, we're looking at yeah, late February, maybe March. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so your background uh, organizing the the reviews like that and bringing in all these different musicians and singers. Talk about how you you got into it. Well, you know, it's a labor of love. Uh, as a little boy, I used to always go to the Apollo Theater religiously, and I have a list of all the shows I saw that will come up and write it down. It's just amazing to look at this list, you know, this many years later and see who went on to be great and who went who didn't really do anything, but. The main thing I got from that was how great these entertainers were. And I saw the best, I mean, everyone from James Brown, Al Green, Curtis Mayfield, Sly and the Family, I saw everyone there, and I learned from them. And these artists, they didn't have the benefit of videos and 100 dances or even worse. They weren't lip-syncing. These artists had to get up there on stage, whether they felt good or not, and, and kick it live. And that's just like, I, I, I truly went to school with that. It's just the most amazing thing. So... When I say it's a labor of love, I, I never want us to forget their legacy because R&B, all too often, the legacy is forgotten. You know what I mean? Right, sure. E- except on, you know, the big stations just play like on a Sunday morning. That's about it. But, but you know, I'm, I really mean uh, uh, amongst the people or amongst, uh, it's just not as well known, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yes, Elvis and the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, they're great. And, and, I, and I always say, and I hope this doesn't sound politically incorrect, I always say that there are white kids being born today whose parents are going to make sure they know who Elvis and the Beatles are, and, right. and rightly they should. But with, with, with black parents, we don't always let our kids know about the legacy of those that went before us. So as a result, a lot of black kids think music started with P. Diddy and, and, and Beyonce and things like that. You know, and Not that there's anything wrong with that, but we, we need to honor, the, honor this music and these musicians because these people were creating art from... They didn't have the multi-million dollar album budgets, you know what I mean, or, or right. videos. They were going from town to town in the station wagon and laying it down, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so why do you think that is uh, with, with black parents as far as neglecting passing on the musical legacy? And- it, it's not anything new. I mean, you know, a long time, it's like if you go to a blues concert, the only black people you see, they will be on stage. Right, <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right. We just uh, have a history, uh, regretfully so, of, of of not keeping up our past or keeping up our, our, our you know, it's like a, we just have this amnesia. And if I may be allowed to, may I be allowed to mention a name? I don't know if this would be politically, not politically uh, yeah, correct. Cause, this. Because oh. I was going to drop a name after you, but let, let me. Okay, well, here, okay. let me give you a perfect example. When this was really hammered home to me, uh-huh. and I'm not sure the demographic for the uh, VOF listens, but uh, I'm at a gym, and I run into Damon Dash. Are you familiar with right, him? Right, sure. Yeah. Okay, the, the head man is over at Rockefeller and everything. And I told him, I said, hey, I'm producing this kid who's got a great voice. He's got a great falsetto. He sounds just like Eddie Kendricks. 
And Damon Dash looked at me and said, who's Eddie Kendricks? And I remember thinking, oh, my God. At first I thought he was joking, but he was serious. And he's old enough to know better. And this isn't to knock Brother Dash, but I'm like, okay, look, somebody's not. I mean, out of all the temptations, Eddie Kendricks was the most successful, had the most hit records. And so for him to not even be aware of who he was, I'm like, hey, I got to make sure that, that people know about this music one way or another. So, uh, Yeah, I, I give you tremendous respect for that because... You know, it's definitely needed. And I was going to bring you a short story about when I went to see Maceo Parker at Irvin Plaza. Oh, please tell it to me. And the makeup, racial makeup. I mean, the place was packed, which is good. But the brothers and sisters were were maybe in five percent attendance. And, and, that, I'm and thinking, that's this no is, surprise at all. And this is the biggest musical. Everything happened in New York. But where was the support for Maceo? I know exactly I, I, yeah, what you mean. Right now, now part of that, I um. Sometimes I think it can be attributed to the fact that there are no promotion for those shows uptown in Harlem. Because even if the younger brothers and sisters didn't go, there may be some older people who would go, but they don't know about it. Right, sure. You know, it's one of the yeah. things I was mentioning in B.B. King's. Bobby Blue Bland was there recently, and, and there were no posters uptown. No one knew about it. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't turn them off, sometimes the steep ticket prices right. do. You know, um, to pay $95 to see James Brown at B.B. At King's, that's a bit much. But right, sure. But nonetheless... We should be a little bit more aware, but like I said, you can go uptown and ask ten people who Maceo Park is, and somebody might remember him as being James Brown's sax player. And it just shouldn't be that way, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't, I don't think that I can correct all the injustices by doing a once a month show. But if if I hit two or three people to this music, then I've done my job. That's right. These artists are so uh, so brilliant. I'll tell you something else. I have a lot of videotape footage on them, and whenever these artists come to town. I go out of my way to make sure I get them copies of the stuff because they've never seen it. Oh, the artists, right? Yeah, they've yeah. never seen these old Soul Train clips and things like that. And uh, and they'll use it. Oh man, this is wonderful, man. How much y'all eat for this? I'm like, hey, you can't pay me any money. I've I've learned a a <laughs> life uh, time of lessons from you guys. So uh, and for the most part, they're the most wonderful people in the world. Just glad to be acknowledged. You know what I right. mean? So so a as a kid, were you? Uh Recording a lot of stuff, uh, videos off of TV and stuff like that. Growing up, well, no, didn't didn't really have uh, a video camera back then. But I get a little tape recorder right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and recorded, you know, put it up next to the speaker on the TV. My mother right. thought I was crazy, but she but she let me do it. But um, I was always going to see everybody, no matter who came to town. I wanted to go see them. I wanted to sit at the foot of the stage and watch them do their thing. And as a result, there isn't much that can happen on stage right now that I'm sort of not ready for because I've seen them in sickness. Uh, and in health, and uh, when their record's on the top of the charts and when their record's on the bottom of the charts. And these entertainers still walk down on stage looking good. Nobody looks good anymore. They were sharp, smelling good, and you you knew they were stars. And that, that's such a bygone... Uh, I'm looking at uh, Justin Timberlake the other night. He's singing with Al Green, and he's got a T-shirt and jeans. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> you're standing next to Al Green, son. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So um, it, it's a trip, you know? Yeah, so... So we should uh, let our listeners know um, they can go to your website, and uh, it's TrueBeatPro, T-R-U, BeatPro, Yeah, www.TrueBeatPro.com. And uh, right now, uh, this is really important because you can spend a nice night at B.B. King's Blues Club and Grill, and uh, Carlton Smith and Friends present Christmas Soul in Times Square. We're going to get down. We're going to do some Christmas classics, then we're going to just do some straight-up R&B classics, and we're going to party as long as they live. See, they have to drag me off the stage. I kid you not. I right. love it. It's therapy for me. And they're like, Carlton, you got to bring the show into two hours. But my tickets are real cheap. The tickets are like $12 in advance. And if I can give the people a three-hour show for that, it's about entertainment value, getting an actual show. You know, and, um, yeah, right. I, I so believe in that. So, yeah, anybody that comes, as a matter of fact, anybody that does show up, please tell me that they will listen to WVOF. And I don't, I'll think of something. We'll give them a T-shirt or put them up on stage or whatever. You know what I mean? Let's have some fun with it. Yeah, that, that's real cool. And uh, how about uh, getting together? First, let's talk about getting together the artists for one of the showcases and then Getting mm -hmm. everybody fine tuned for that night because you got people from different cities and different all, all sorts. Well, you of know bands. what I do is is, is I, I believe in that J O B. Just one break. If you can sing, that's good. But if you can perform, that's even more important because anyone can sing. You can go to a church and find ten great singers. But I'm looking for people who can get on that stage and connect with an audience uh -huh. to really make them feel and believe. Not so much hit the notes technically. Just uh, forget vocal perfection. If you can get up there and make sure that my audience is enjoying you and enjoying what you're doing, I mean, that that's everything right there. So whenever I see people, they could be singing in the subway or 
more often than not, they're usually in the audience. And, they'll, and I'll break it down. I have the band play a little groove. And I'll say, look, if there's somebody out there that can do a little something, coming up, coming up stage. Sometimes it's hilarious because it's so bad. Right. Every now and then we get a gym. And then it's about that work ethic. Can you be at rehearsals on time? Can you be at rehearsal prepared? And can you look good on stage? And once you get through those things, which is what you need to make it in this business anyway, I believe, then you're in my show. So you don't have to be a big name or a phenomenal talent. You just have to have a love and appreciation of this music and be able to put it across, you know? Hey, can you sing? I can sing. You know, Days of Wild, you know that band? They wanted me to come Whoa, up and the sing. Prince, the Prince band. Yeah, they wanted me to come up and sing Stefan did, but I... I, I I said I need rehearsal time. <laughs> Whoa, they, they were at the Bitter Inn the other night. Yeah, we saw them a few weeks ago. We saw them at the Village Lantern, and then, yeah, we saw them at the Bitter Inn a couple weeks ago. So. How are they? They still doing a lot of Prince stuff? Yeah, Prince, Sly, but they got some original jams they've been working. I, I got to go check them out. Yeah. Right? But see, I, I go see bands that they, man, I, I ain't going to lie. I get competitive. I want to get on stage, and I want to get down. You know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll let you up there. I know they will. They better not. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I won't right. get off the stage. But I've met one or two of them. They're good guys, so I wish them nothing but the best. Yeah. They're, doing a B, they're doing a Prince tribute to B.B. King, as a matter of fact. I was asked to do it, so I'm just trying to decide what song I'm going to do. That, that's in March, right? The yeah. The 15th, right? I might do a real slow, funky version of Lady Cab Driver. You oh, know what man. I mean? That would Lady be great. Cab Driver. That's it. Let's put a little groove behind it. I like to change things around, you know? Yeah. There you go. You know, they they had the big reunion uh, for a lot of the Minneapolis cats this weekend. Out right. in Los Angeles. So, um, You know, I'm... I'm Letting our listeners know that uh, you've got a great background in all door, sorts of uh, different uh, medium, acting and uh, performing in, in films. and oh, yeah. what, What's well, been going did... along with uh, the acting part well, of you? Well, uh, um, nowadays I can be seen semi-regularly uh, on As the World Turns, playing the cop. I'm, I'm, they gave me some lines a couple of times, but for the most I'm sort of walking around arresting people, which is fun. Uh-huh. It's interesting to see how TV works. Um, I haven't done any major film work since I did Liberty Heights. So you, do you listen to know about that? That's right. Yeah, with J- uh, Barry Levinson. Barry Levinson. Yeah, I got, I, I got to Brown. tell you something funny about that. Uh-huh. Um, first of all, it's such a blessing. I, I grew up and got a chance to portray my idol on screen. There's nothing that could ever top that. James Brown, that's the first place my mother ever took me, was to the Apollo Theater to see James Brown. So wow. to get the chance to portray him was just uh, amazing. And when I met him a year or so after the film came out, it was backstage at B.B. King's, and he's like, oh, that movie was out of sight, man. And the way they went back and forth between me and you. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I said to myself, I said, wait a minute, they didn't go back and forth between me and you. But he thought the faraway shots were him and the close-up shots were me. And I was just like, well, you know what, Mr. Brown, yes, they did go back and forth between me and you. <laughs> this, what better testament to how well I did my job? I yeah. think it was a blessing, you if know. you could fool the original guy, right? You know what I'm saying? He really thought the far away shots were him. So I'm like, sure it was. You know what I mean? Uh, but um, right. I'm doing that. Right now I'm also working on a one-man play called Soul Ain't Nothing But a Feeling. Okay. And uh, we shot uh, a video presentation for that. So we're going to see if we can get it up and running. And it's basically, it's, it's, it's a fictional account of an R&B singer who used to be out there back in the day. He was on all the shows with Otis Redding and The Temptations and Aretha. But he never had a hit record. But he was just a guy that was always on the shows. So here it is many years later on in life, and someone finds an old record that he recorded, and it all of a sudden becomes a hit again. So he's sitting down with a, with a, a critic and just sort of going through all the years of R&B, the civil rights movement, the disco era, the gangster rap era, and just talking about his observations having been out there. And it's, uh, it, it's very interesting and very enjoyable. You know, there'll be some fond memories in there, you know? And uh, all the information, once again, is at True Beat Pro, T-R-U. True Beat Pro. That we haven't put up yet because we haven't finished filming it. But as soon as it's ready to go, it'll be there. And, and uh, you, you'll be getting a copy of everything. We're, we're family now, Joe. That's right. <laughs> De- most definitely. A live radio interview, man. We're family, you right. know. So, so also, um, you know, we should let our listeners know they should expect uh, Carlton Smith some uh, great CDs coming out in 2004. What's, what's oh, going yeah. on with you? We're, um, I'm doing Carlton J. Smith live at B.B. King's with his bad self. That's, that's the uh-huh. actual title. Right. And uh, Now, on that CD, I'm doing a lot of it's just bits and pieces from a show. We're doing a lot of different uh, cover tunes of some Marvin Gaye, some Curtis Mayfield. But in between the tracks, I'm sort of reminiscing about having met these people, having seen them, and what the music meant. And then at the end of the CD, there's some bonus tracks 
from some original music I've got coming out. So there will be two CDs, and WVOF will have a bunch of copies to give away, you know, so uh, the listeners need to just tune in. And you going to come up with some great trivia questions for them? Oh, I, I'm definitely going to rack my brain for it. Uh, right on yeah. time. So it's going to be Carlton J. Smith live at B.B. King's, and then it's going to be a lifetime of R&B, which will be all original music. And it's, uh, it's as funky as it is soulful, I kid you not. Kid you not. No, yeah. no guest rappers, no guest stars, just me and my band doing my thing, you know? Uh-huh. So, so, so Christmas songs uh, is the theme for this Wednesday show at BB King's. Oh, yeah, in New yeah. York City. How, how about some of your personal favorites from from that season? Mm, yeah, uh, the number one favorite would have to be Silent Night by The Temptations. Uh huh. But not the not the original Temptations. The '80s Temptations recorded one that's real. It's got a nice slow church groove. That that's just that's my song. And then there's another one. Speaking of the Minneapolis Cats called Our First Christmas by Alexander O'Neill. Oh, wasn't yeah, a big yeah. hit record, but I right. love it. Yeah. You know that song? Oh, yeah. I, yeah he I, put out it, a Christmas album. That, that, it was sort right. of underrated, but uh, yeah, he's one of my favorite guys, man. I love his voice. Yeah. A bunch of the time guys have been on the show, and Monty Moyer and Jelly Bean, and wow. Really? What, what's Alexander like? Is he cool people? Did they I, you know, I've never met Alexander. They say he's real nice and really talented. Um, I think he's back in Minneapolis. Yeah, he needs to come. I met him years ago when he first came. He's got a son named Carlton, as a matter of fact. So that was our first oh, okay. point of a conversation. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd say Silent Night by the Temptations, our first Christmas by Alexander O'Neill, and all the classics, you know, cl- classics, classics. Uh, the Christmas song, you know. Um, all the, is Ave Maria, and this may seem silly, is that, is that an inspirational song? Or is that really considered a Christmas song? You got me. That's a trivia question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I love it. Just makes me feel that that whole spirit. But uh, right, right. Love all the classics, but uh, first and foremost, a silent night, without right. a doubt. Now, uh, also, uh, I wanted to ask you, you: you grew up originally in New York? Oh yeah. Yeah, born and raised, and still born living and raised there. Back there in Spanish Harlem. Right. So, so growing up, uh, did you buy a lot of records as a youngster? You know, it's funny. You should see my apartment. It is nothing but albums and forty fives. Wow. And CDs. I kid you not. I, I still have my mother's eight tracks. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I have nothing but 45s and albums. I, I, you know, I like CDs. I'm down with the whole MP3, iPod thing, but nothing will ever take the place of a 33 and a third vinyl album. Right, with right. With the pops and scratches, uh, the Rice Krispies, I call them. That just gives it, uh, I, just, I just love it. And I still have all my records, you know, so... Uh, and constantly buying some more because as you walk through the streets of New York, there's always a, a, a lot of guys that they were, I guess, semi-homeless, you know. Right. They, I don't know where they get these records from, but they have some great stuff in their collection. So I, I pick up a bunch of things, you know, for a yeah. dollar, two dollars here and there. Down in the subways, too. They got some, always, yeah. always, yeah. man. I'm, a, I'm an album. I'm a vinyl junkie, you know. How, how about uh, going to see concerts? I know you, you, you've seen a lot of shows up at the Apollo, but well, do you I'm, remember the first one? Uh, uh, the first one was James Brown. Oh, cool. I have a deal yeah. power. But let me tell you something. Uh, another thing I'm working on, I still have all those old show posters. As a kid, I used to take them down off the street when they would staple them up to the lamppost. Oh, yeah, okay. And I still have the, the Jacksons at Madison Square Garden, Stevie Wonder, Radio City, Marvin Gaye. And uh, I want to do something with these posts. I just don't know what, but this stuff is like art, man. You, you Like I'm looking at one right now. Find a family stone, special guest star Eddie Kendricks, Master Square Garden, tickets eight dollars and fifty cents. You can't beat that. Wow. And I, what I usually do is at Christmas I'll, I'll print some of these up and frame them and give them to friends if I know they like a particular artist, you know, I'll do that. So uh yeah, man, I, I, I still have all my ticket stuff. I <laughs> Joe, I'm a music <laughs> fanatic, man. Yeah. <laughs> my life is music. You you gotta open up a store or a uh, museum. Or something, or something, man, to yeah. share this stuff and right. I'm gonna tell you something, it's not without a... Uh, it's detriment. I mean, more often than not, when you're just committed and dedicated to music, or to anything for that matter, it's, it's usually at the expense of relationships or family or friends, but I don't regret it at all because music uh, music just makes my day. You know, it, like uh, people think I'm crazy, but I have all my heroes' names tattooed on my arms. You know what I'm saying? So who's on your arm? You name Marvin Gaye, The Temptations, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett, James Brown. Wow. Everybody, I kid you not, going down both arms, man. And people see it and they're amazed. But I'm like, these people, their music means that much to me. If I'm having a bad day, I can put on two songs by, by Curtis Mayfield. And, you know, I'm immediately in a better world, you know. And uh, it's, it means that much to me. That's all I can really say about it. So uh, my special guest, if you've tuned in thus far, Carlton J. Smith singer songwriter producer actor entrepreneur and uh he's got a great great 
uh, showcase Christmas jams, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, the Christmas Soul Jams. It's Christmas Soul Jams at BB King's on December Wednesday. 17th, this Wednesday. Uh, we're going to hit at 7.30 sharp, so get there a little earlier. Uh, did, did, uh, were you aware of the show we did about a week ago? Uh, yeah, we were plugging on the other, the Sinatra show. How'd that go? I, man, I got to tell you, I, we're working on, on, a, on a video compilation of it right now. I'm going to send it to you. That show was, and, and, you know, I know I was involved with it, but, I mean, really being objective, phenomenal. When, what it was to all the listeners is that we did, it was called Soulfully Sinatra. We took all these Frank Sinatra classics and we did them R&B style. So it sounded like Teddy Pendergrass or Al Green doing uh, doing Frank Sinatra songs, and it just went so well. So we're we're looking to do it again down at the Blue Note, and possibly take it out to Vegas someplace because uh, yeah, you know at first it, it was met with a lot of skepticism. Oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. But I'm like, hey, it's just music, and all you got to do is just change the groove on the bass and drums, and you got something altogether different. So yeah. uh, it came off so well, man. I'll make sure I get you a copy of it. Yeah, that, that sounded and, like... And when we do it again, you got to be there. You'll love it. Yeah, most definitely. How about uh, about the... Uh, I was going to ask you about the artists that you've uh, given tribute to that are are still living. Have you did they ever join you on stage or give you feedback? The closest we ever came, we almost had the Family Stone come down. Oh, when, when okay. We did, uh, right, for the show that you saw. Right, yeah, right. right. You yeah. never knew that. They were almost going to be there, but it took place around July 4th, and they wanted to be with their family. Oh, I and gotcha. then a part of that, I think, also is because, you know, we could talk forever about this, but the Family Stone, they know it's not what it once was. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have Sly there and, and, now, and, and Larry Graham has been, has been hanging with Prince, you almost don't really have Sly and the Family Stone. And that's right. not to take anything away from the other members. They're just as talented, but the draw is Sly and Larry. You know, so uh, they're supposed to be working on a CD, but I've been hearing that for a while. But uh, that's as close as we've come to actually having someone there. I've never really tried to contact anyone to be point blank honest with you mm-hmm. to, you know and it's something i think about but sometimes what i find is that in dealing with a lot of these very same heroes of mine yes for the most part they're great but it's the gatekeepers you know what i mean it's, the, it's their it's their management or the people around them that can make it such an unpleasant situation how about so I, how about a, a prince tribute did you ever do one of those no but, uh right. and we were going to do it but now someone else beat me to it so i'm just going to perform on the show and uh and try to steal the show <laughs> <There you go. laughs> with 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 the one or two songs they're gonna let me do. But uh, and I thought about it. But um, no, we're gonna do, we we did Earth Wind Find the Ozzy Brothers, and that's when we were thinking about doing Prince. Oh yeah, another show that we did that great. came off so well. We did a tribute to the Jackson Five, uh-huh. which at first thought sounds a little corny because you you know people look at Michael and all the stuff he's going through. You just think of him as a freak, but he did some great great music with his brothers. Oh yeah, and I'm not talking about I want you back. We did Never Can't Say Goodbye, Maybe Tomorrow. Want to be where you are. We did the class your stuff, man. The show went so well that, uh, you know, we're, we're going to do that show again. So uh, it seems like you got a really great uh, relationship with BB Kings and the they're good people. God yeah. bless them. They're, they're good people, and and they they heard about me uh, through my performing other places, and they they really let me. Uh, no, they don't let me do everything I want to do, but they let me do more than enough, and I'm I'm incredibly grateful for them uh, for that. Now, Matter of fact. Like I tell you, we just redid the Sinatra thing. Now we're going to be taking on other artists and making their, and doing their music R&B style. We're going to do the Rolling Stones. Okay, wow. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to do the Beatles. And, and you know, we're going to Bob Dylan. We're going to do R&B shows on all these people. So it's, uh, it's just going to be an interesting concept. So, so why don't you give us a little uh, background of who's, who's in the band, uh, the house band, uh, for, for it's my band, the Mighty Magnificence. There's okay. some great guys. I drive them crazy because I'm never <laughs> doing the stuff. I tell them the first rule is watch me because I'm subject to go to the bridge when the verse should be this. And uh, they're on pins and needles, but for the most part, they carry it off. It's Dan Nockamson on keyboard. You want me to name them? Oh, you, you, you can go through them if you want. Yeah, out. sure. Uh, David Geist on bass. Uh, Kevin Chisholm, who's, who's like my main man, my main partner on guitar. And Joe Mahone, who's the most phenomenal drummer you will ever come across. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, we bring in some different cats for horns. Gary Picard, uh, Alex Norris, and uh, as far as my vocalists, uh, there's a there's a young lady by the name of Sharon Quinn, and Shanette Beretta, who are just amazing. Will bring tears to your eyes. They're they're just phenomenal. Carl Dixon. I got a, I got some guy Trevor McCullum. I got and Nicole Hudson. Right. I'm just I'm sorry. I'm just thinking oh, that's okay. Them up. Yeah, they're these great. are some. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. They're great. They're dedicated. And I really appreciate they're putting the time and effort 
And to this, yeah, they get on my nerves, but you know that I'm sure I get on theirs. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and those are some of the artists uh, on your on your record label with uh, Trudy, right? Yeah. Well, no, it's not a record label yet. We're trying to we're trying to make it a decent management company. Okay. And I'm trying to get everybody in the studio to record different things on them, and some and that's where the it becomes a hassle because you know sometimes people have families or they have other things they they have to do jobs or whatever. Whereas this is my life, this is my existence from sun up to sundown, and I and I have to. I have to be mindful of the fact that not everybody can be as committed and as dedicated as I am. But uh, I'm trying to get them all in and trying to get something happen. You know what I mean? So um, it'll happen soon enough. And I, and I kid you not, uh, I'm doing this radio interview with you. I so appreciate it. Everything we do, I'm going to kick it straight to WVOF, man. You know, for yeah. what it's worth, you will be getting the exclusives. Oh, much love to you then. Yeah, yeah. This, now and when we blow up with it. I ain't going right. to forget you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I, I was the thing that really blew me away seeing you with... Uh, yeah, I heard all about you, um, Coyote, uh, who played a couple gigs with you guys. Yeah, my man, how's Coyote yeah. doing? Yeah, he came to the studio. Uh, I, you know, last time I saw him, we were going to see uh, Days of Wild, and he was came out of a gig at Kenny's Castaway, I think he was playing. But he's actually performed live on the studio. I bring in bands to play, that's what I'm saying. Oh, we'd bring, love to bring do you guys come right in room. here. We'd yeah. love that. And, and I want you to put me in touch. I haven't heard from him and, and spoken to him in quite some time, so you got to put me in touch with him. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass along his numbers. I can get him from my Let me wife, tell you something. So. I, wrote, uh, I wrote some great stuff with him. We would get in the, in, in the rehearsal room and just jam and came up with some great stuff with Kyle Turner. He is, he is truly the man. Yeah, I miss a, him. I, de- yeah. I definitely miss him. Um, I was going to ask you another question uh, about seeing people perform live. Um, sure. Who haven't you seen live in a concert that few people that you'd be loving to see on stage um i've seen just about everybody i need to see except those those that passed away before i was born i mean so and even then i've got phenomenal video footage on them so that'll just have to do but you know i never saw the original temptations i never saw sam cook or otis redding or you know or or, or jackie wilson or, or you know certain people like that duke ellington i mean i can go way way back i mean i've seen everybody else i need to see you know, and it makes it so difficult for me to to be impressed by people who are coming out there now. When you've seen Aretha Franklin, there's there's not much Ashanti anybody can do for you. You know, and that's right, not right. To, that's no disrespect to her. I love her beats. I love what's going on. But when you when you've seen Marvin Gaye get on stage and he's hoarse and he still hits those notes and and or, or goes for it, I don't want to see uh, Justin or somebody's uh, lip sync. Uh, that just doesn't do it for me. You know what I mean? So uh, out out of all the new cats that are out there now. Uh, Jaheim, I think he has a wonderful, phenomenal voice. He just, uh, you know, he's got the album Still Ghetto, mm-hmm. but uh, he just needs to do better material. Everything, right. is, every his music is just too ghetto. He needs to branch out. There's a new cat, Anthony Hamilton. So there's some new guys out there who, who I think would have been good in any era. You know right, what I mean? Right. How, how about the New York music scene uh, in particular? How, how have you seen it uh, evolve for for live artists like yourself? Mm. That now that that's the first question which you stumped me. I mean, the same as it ever You get up on the stage, you get there on time, you be do your thing, you put on a hell of a show, right? You know, uh, and the people come to see live music. I mean, it's always been people who will go see live music and people will go to a club. Mm-hmm. So not much has changed. I, I, if anything, what bothers me is that people don't people don't look good on stage anymore. Nobody gets dressed. People just get up there looking like bums and right, right. I don't. I just I just can't get with that. When you talk on. A, you're sharp and you look good. You look like a star. That's half the show right there. Then you just got to sound good and put and and and, and have your songs tight. And you got to make, but don't get up there in dirty jeans and sneakers and a t-shirt and because it just takes away I, the the visual is a big part of it for me as well. Right and so, uh, and yeah, I, I definitely agree with you because it's like uh, you know the people on stage should always look better than most people in the crowd. Without a doubt, don't yeah. let me be sitting in the audience and I'm sharper than you are. That right. breaks my heart, man. I saw Jeffrey Osborne headline in Radio City once, and he came out in some loafers, some slacks, and a sweater, which is great if you're doing a sound check, right. but, not, but not when you headline in the show. Right. And I'm sitting up there in a royal blue two-piece silk suit. Come on, man. Yeah, and you could see one of, one of the suits uh, right right on the website that, you, that you're up there right oh, there. Oh, please. Yeah. That, man, you know, and that is my vice. Shoes, and, and I got that from James Brown, uh-huh. who when I was a little boy said, you always get on a stage, you look your best. You smell your best because, hey, that's just how it has to be. That's why you're a star. You're not a plumber. There's nothing to knock plumbers. If you got any plumbers out there, say, if you're yeah, listening. That's right. But uh, 
You get up there, you look like a star. This whole this whole thing about you know keeping it real and wearing baggy jeans. Uh, nah, man, that 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 don't look good. You know, as good as Justin was the other night. If he'd had on a nice suit singing with the Reverend Al Green, it would have just it would have just gave it an altogether different vibe. Yeah. As it stands, he and his band looked like they were just at a rehearsal or something. You know. Yeah, people would have been talking about it. Yeah, be uh, a more star days, at all yeah. times. Right. Be a star. Now. Uh, People can go to your website, TrueBeatPro, T-R-U-B-E-A-T-P-R-O.com, uh-huh. and uh, drop a message on the message, uh, the guest book. Please do. And sign up for the mailing list. And, Please do. Uh, Tell me, and man, you can say whatever, y'all can say whatever you want, no matter how crazy it is. I love it all. I welcome the feedback <laughs> tremendously. Ask me anything. I will get back to you. You know, uh, if there's some music or something, and I like to do this, if there's some music or you have a, a, an artist that you're just fanatical about, let me know about it. If I can get you a videotape on them, I would do that. I make texts to people all the time. Because yeah, and you had stuff some, is to be shared. I mean, you had some great footage. You you even prefaced some of it that it's not going to look perfect, but I mean, some of that Sly Stone when he was on was Mike that Douglas. Outrageous? Yeah, that was incredible. And that was night, it? I think you know, and I felt bad because I thought I showed too much of it, and people wanted to see uh, uh, see a show. But you know, nonetheless, I want these shows to be occasional. And back in the day. Talk shows. This wasn't just crazy Jerry Springer type stuff. You'd have an opera singer, an R&B singer, a politician. You'd have all these different people in it. It made for a very interesting show. So um, I love to show that stuff, man. I, and I sit up and watch it all the time. You know, right? I always get something from it. So uh, our listeners, Carlton J. Smith, has been our special guest here on the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, and he's going to come by. Hopefully, bring him and his band into the studio uh, early part of 2004. To- you got more than enough space in there for a whole band to get down. Oh, yeah. We've had uh, upwards of eight musicians in here. Oh, so, man. We're going to slam. We're going to have a ball. Yeah. And we, uh, we broadcast on the television network here around uh, the campus here. and uh, Right. On yeah. hey, uh, is there a way to record it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Live at the Upper Room. I like the way that sounds. Sounds like an old Motown album. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Live at the Upper Room. And well, wasn't I- there a club, the Upper Room? I think so. I, I, you know, actually, I'll, I'll give you a quick. The way I took the name was from uh, Prince had a song "Sex in the Summer" off Emancipation. Okay. And he just mentioned that talking about Mahalia Jackson, and it's oh. kind of, you know, I just it stuck for some reason. I mean, there's a lot of upper rooms, but we, you know. Oh, yeah, I am. Lo- I'm looking at the at the CD right now. "Sex in the Summer." Yeah. Right, yeah. So so he mentions it real quickly, but the way he sang it, kind of behind the beat, was kind of cool. So. Okay, I got, let me take yeah. that and check it out after fit. And yeah. what did he say about Mahalia Jackson? Well, he says he he's listened to Mahalia's greatest in the upper room. All and, right, that is a song. Right, yeah, okay, yeah. now it all makes sense. Right, so, yeah. So, and, you know, people always ask, you know, the religious reference and everything, but, you know, it's kind of cool. And I think it's real cool, man, without a doubt. Yeah, Matter so. Fact, hold on one second. Meanwhile, ask me something, Joe. Oh, that's Okay. <laughs> So you're going to be uh, at BB King's. Uh, place is a nice, classy place. People can I am get there all the time. There. And my tickets are the cheapest tickets. You go online, you can get them for twelve dollars. Yeah, you can't come beat on, that. you can't beat that in New York City. So uh, matter of fact, if you if there's a certain way that you do, if you really go online, where they're like eight dollars. Okay. Wait, can you hear this, Joe? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I that, found it, Mahalia yeah, Jackson. That's classic, man. In the upper room. <laughs> right. I love that. You have a copy of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put this on and listen to it, man. Maybe I'd maybe I do an R&B version of that and play it on your show, man. Oh, man. That that would make my day. That would, I, You know, just having yawns cool. I kid you not. I'm, I'm going to get to work. Let me keep this CD out in the upper room. We're going to do something with that, man. Yeah. That, that'll be your theme song, yeah, okay? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> And uh, no, I, I I love that. And Carlton J. Smith and friends, uh, this Wednesday, Christmas Soul Jams. Uh, showtime starting at seven thirty. Get there early, get some food and and uh, drinks, and, and just make relax. Sure you come backstage and let me know that hey, you're from Fairfield, Connecticut, or you were listening to WVOF, and give me a holler, man. I'm right. very accessible after the show. Please give me a holler. And let's have some. Or at some point during the show, when I ask people to come on stage and dance, feel free to get up there and do your thing. That's right, and. Uh, if if people are are uh, given enough response to put the spotlight on you, bring you up on stage. I remember you call people out. They shown the light on, and I love it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we, uh, you you say you signed the Family Stone show, right? Yeah, right. This one girl got up and just blew the house down. Yeah, Thank right. you. 
We yeah. put her we put her in the Rita Franklin show. She tore it up. Oh yeah, I remember her. She was standing by the bar, I think, right? There you go, her name was Shakanya. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With a name like that, she had to be able to save herself. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Shakanya. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All man. right, Jeff. Yeah, so uh, everybody head on to the website. You can do your homework right now, and we'll be uh, re-airing this interview in its entirety, and uh, that'll be for two, three nights. You can go to our website, our 24-hour broadcast, Upper Room with Joe Kelly.com, K-E-L-L-E-Y.com, and go to TrueBeatPro.com, and uh, thanks to Trudy for uh, hooking this up. That's my part. I, I, I'd be lost without it. All any artist wants is to be felt, and she feels me as an artist and, and helps me achieve my goals. God bless her. Yeah, so, so thanks so much, Carlton. Uh, Joe, yeah. thank you. I so appreciate this, man. We got to get together and just yeah. sit on the campfire and talk. That's right. Let me leave your listeners with this. In the words of one of the greatest poets ever, Mr. Sylvester Stewart, time is passing. I grow older. Things are happening fast. All I've got to hold on to is a simple song at last. That says it all for me, Joe. Hey, well, well spoken right there. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out with uh, Amacio since, uh, was he at the, the show when you saw James Brown? Oh, please, I've seen him a million times. God right. bless him. And, and when Macy and James do their thing, I got a video clip of them I'm going to send you. You'll love it. Whew. All right. You so love the popcorn. <laughs> mother popcorn. But I got I got a new joint off of Maceo's new record. Uh, it's called Off the Hook. Is it funky? It's it's guaranteed funkiness. So this will be a plane as we say goodbye. So thanks, Carlton. <laughs>